so we're here at the Dayton Hamvention 2019, day one. I'm joined by Eric um, H. Uh, WA6, sorry, HHQ. Welcome, Eric. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming down. Once again, and uh, we've got some really exciting news today. Ellicraft have just announced the new K4 transceiver, um, which looks wonderful. We've got uh, a couple of, uh, I presume these are prototypes, Eric, are they? Yeah, these are actually um, pre production units right now, and, but they're running production, you know, pre production software, but almost the final stuff. And we're uh, getting close to uh, bringing it to uh, production now. Excellent. And this looks like a very built-in radio. So you've got the pan adapter, you've got the everything's in kind of one unit. So just talk us through the radio if you can, Eric. Well, basically the um, the K4 has obviously got a lot of DNA from the K3, our high performance in the K3S, of course, radios. Um, but we combine the pan adapter capability inside the radio, so no more second box with the P3 like we have with the K3. But we are basically a direct sampling in the, in the core radio, digital signal processed radio. So we're direct sampling at the operating RF. So if you're on 20 meters at 14 megahertz, going directly down to baseband and DSP processing, all the filtering is done in the DSP on the core radio. There's no crystal filters to buy. And it's great performance at the core radio. We actually offer a whole range of, of options on the radio to bring it up even to higher performance. But uh, you've got capability of uh, doing remote Stuff we'll talk about, I guess, in a little bit on this built-in, and you've got um, excellent user interface where you're not just all screen-oriented. You've got the ability still to have buttons to uh, comfortably use for common functions. Some of that's redundant. You can do it on the screen, too, but you actually have a nice graphic user interface that's easy to follow and also a, a nice uh, sort of tactile, real radio feel, too. Sure, so it's a touchscreen display. And if I was, a, a, say, a K3 user now and I went to the K4, would this look familiar? Would I, would I have to learn again, or is this going to be a straightforward uh, thing to use for no, me? You know, obviously, there'll be some new things, but overall, it's got the same logic flow and easy to use. We've, if anything, refined it, so it's even more, you know, much more easy to use than anything that we've seen over the last uh, 12 years with the K3 and the K3S that we wanted to improve on the user interface. We've incorporated that into this radio, too. And I can see you've got quite a large display here. So we've got the screen on this monitor. So you've got outputs for that? Yeah, so um, out the back of the um, K4, i got to be careful, I'm so used to saying K3, I, uh, I stop myself sometimes. Back of the K4 has an HDMI interface standard, so this is an HDMI monitor. Um, a lot of radios will take their main screen and just duplicate it in a large monitor, and we felt, well, you may want to do that, we'll give you that option too. That's too cluttered sometimes for some people, they just want to see as much pan adapter as they yes. can. So the first unique screen is it's a totally independent screen from the main screen, so we can duplicate or have just the pan adapter like we're doing here. And if we're, for instance, showing two bands for the two receivers, you can actually have a split screen both places and look at you know, left, you know, one receiver and the other one. We have plans to be able to offer other things on the screen here too, but this is the, the first stuff we're doing. Yeah, so as you can see, the, the, on the screen, on the, on the rig, we've got the frequency, etc., and you've just got a pan adapter here, so I guess that's, I like to say, configurable. And I believe there's some options, or there are different models available. Perhaps you can take us through the, the, the sure. options. I'll go really quick. K4, the basic radio is, again, the direct sampling radio, no crystal filters required. 160 through 6 meters, and also has an option for uh, down the road here. We're not going to have it out until next year, a dual band VHF, UHF, uh, 2 meter, 440, 430 uh, option. But um, beyond that, there's not a lot of physical options to add in the, the radios except to upgrade from one radio to the next. So the next radio up is the K4D. And that adds diversity reception. It adds an additional analog to digital converter and down converter. So you can now have two different antennas coming in, either on the same band and doing diversity where you're listening to how a signal fades differently on different antenna locations. It can be two dipoles. And one will fade out and you get the other one and then the other one will come up. That's very useful for working weak signal stuff. Or listen to two different bands at the same time. You can do that on both the base radio and this one, but with the K4D, you've got your own bandpass filters for both receivers and on different antennas if you want to use optimized antennas for the two receivers at the same time. So that's the K4D, and that's probably the most popular in terms of the, of the radio, that and the base radio. The K4HD, and we'll be bringing that out a little bit after in terms of an add-on. Again, you can up upgrade from one to the next. K4HD covers the extreme cases of when you're contesting with multiple transmitters on the same band at the same location, or in a de-expedition, things like that, or, or extreme situations like you get in Europe in some cases. Um, that adds, in addition, you don't give away any of the features that you had with the first two, but it adds a uh, K3-style superheterodyne hybrid front end. We convert down from that to um, a 8 megahertz IF. We have pre-built, already installed crystal filters for a sideband, say in a CW bandwidth, on each of the two receive channels on that. And then we direct sample right off of that. And everything's the same on the back end. 
The advantage we've got there is that direct sampling method has much more dynamic range even than the old K3 did after its filters. Okay. So for other signals that are inside that filter that might be on top of you, this has no problem filtering those out because we've got that stronger DSP. So that's the K4, K4D, K4HD. And they're modular. You can get the K4 and you want to say, I want to go to a K4D next year. Um, and then maybe eventually a K4HD because you're doing something more, more critical. Um, so you've got that ability to do it. And plus it's modular. So like new analog to digital converters come out in five years. Yeah. Uh, we can come out with a new direct digital down converter A to D module, and that plugs in on our DSP board. So it's very modular, that's good. So I mean, one of the things that worries me sometimes, when you're buying a rig that's new, is sometimes there might be certain things that aren't quite right, or the things that are getting improved over time. So as a customer, am I able to upgrade this, to sort the software on this over time? Yeah, the software is continually updated by us. We don't charge for updates. That's a, that's a critical feature, positive one for us. And we add new features all the time. A lot of times from user input. I mean, people actually make suggestions to us you know, via the internet and, and, and in person. And we take the best of those and incorporate those to new features into the radio. So I guess that's a simple thing. You just, I guess you look into your PC and upload it, I guess. Oh, you, yeah. you plug it in the P Oh, actually, over the Ethernet. We have Ethernet in the back of ah. these. Um, or USB. Um, and you can basically upload the whole radio. When we put new software versions in, there's multiple computers and processors in here. You don't see that. You just see it automatically all go up to, up to date. But it can sure. be done over the internet. I see you've also got a USB uh, um, connection on the front. Is that for a mouse, keyboard, that sort of thing? Exactly. We've got in the front and two in the back USB-A connections, so you can put a flash drive in and load or save parameters about okay. the, maybe your setup for the radio. Um, you can plug in a maybe a mouse dongle, a wireless one, and have a mouse hooked up so you can track the screen and click that way if you want. Um, one's in the back, also keyboard you can hook up, so we have some built-in data modes. You can do that, too. Yeah. That's really good. Now, you showed me earlier, we've got this tablet. Yes. I think this is some kind of remote control, is that right? Yeah, what we're doing here um, is actually um, built-in remote control in the K4. Um, we actually have a client server model inside the radio where we have the user interface is the client of the in the radio. That's where you touch and do everything. And then the touch screen and also the buttons. And then the, uh, the server interface handles all the coordination within the radio. And that talks also down to the hardware through another network interface. So that's how they talk inside. They're designed like a network inside. But you could also, so while the front panel is talking to the server, you can also come in through the Ethernet from another front panel or a software application. So okay. um, we can have K4 to K4, we'll show that in a second where you can control it. But this is actually just a demonstration of what we're doing. We took the user interface off of K4. It's, this is running on a Linux window. And actually, ironically, because it's a quick tablet we could get inside. And it's not a Windows 10 app, don't worry. But it's actually a Linux application running in a virtual machine window okay. yep. inside of Windows 10 on a, on a Surface tablet. But we can do this for different operating systems like Linux, or, or that'll be probably the first we have, but also um, iOS and, and Android for it, too. And probably, and probably Windows. You know. So those things probably come later for the, 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 other, yeah. the other platforms. Yeah, but what's nice is you can totally control the radio from this. This one's showing just the screen part, but of course the full app would have the buttons. Okay. We have an external um, K-Pod that we sell for our other radios, knob and buttons, and you can actually put that into this and tune the radio and, and so on. So in addition to this, we might want to switch over to the K4 on the right here. Yeah, sure. Uh, two, we can swing around. Uh, these Colin? two are tied together. So the K4 on my right, or your right, well, <laughs> I guess right. the right side as we face it. Yeah. Um, that's acting as another control radio. So actually both this tablet and the K4 are simultaneously controlling the real radio, uh, they're both radios, but on the case of these guys, but this one's acting as a full radio with the receiver. We got signals coming in. But I can go over here and tune that radio. And we see it change on the tablet, the tablet and on the actual real radio. So the data rate's not a problem for us on these, both in-house network where I'm running it right now, or over the internet if you want to do too. So it's sure. designed for a remote control from the start without a lot of external boxes or complicated software to get it going. Now I know on the K3 there was the option to buy it as a kit. Is that still available on the K4 or is, that, is it now factory builds? Um, we do factory built. Um, the initial shipments will be factory built but we will be taking the kit version and bringing that out probably in the first part of this next year. Okay, so if I was desperate to go to one of these, how long have I got to wait? Well, we start the full production shipping against orders we're taking right now, or actually deposits that we're taking sure. right now, um, coming up in um, roughly the end of this year, November, December timeframe. And um, then we will obviously ramp that up against our backlog, and then, of course, the K4HD option will come in a little bit later because that's going to be probably in the first, second quarter next year. So a lot of guys are going to buy that. They want the high-end one. They'll buy the K4D, and then we'll ship them the K4HD when that comes out. Yeah. And pricing? Have we got any word on pricing? Um, the basic pricing on the units right now is on the K4 basic radio. It's uh, $3,999 um, for the radio. Uh, we have an ATU option. I think that's $399. 
and that's pretty much the main stuff in it. It's already got two receivers, it's got all the filtering options, no crystal filters to buy. So that's a big deal. The K4D adds $500 to that, so you're basically up at about $34.99 for the base radio plus the auto tuner if you want it. The reason the auto tuner is optional, some people may be using an external amplifier or be um, uh, with auto tuner external and external antenna switches, they don't need it, or if they're running transverters, things like that. We also have a 10 watt version that's a little bit less too for people. Too. Okay, I was asking you actually, so if you're already an aircraft owner and you've got the amplifier, etc., I assume that will all still work with the K4? Yeah, you can basically choose either way if you want to do that. So if you have the K, say the KPA 500 or the KPA 1500, I presume exactly. that will work in the same KPA way? KPA 500 and 1500 integrate with it like it's a 500 or 1500 watt radio. You basically have everything tied together. Perfect. Eric, if people want more information, where would they go to uh, to get that? Just go to elecraft.com, E-L-E-C-R-A-F-T. We've got information on the K4 there. You can order or place deposits for it right now. We'll keep status updates, more documentation, the uh, the, the pro product folder, I mean the product uh, brochure and all of the uh, FAQs and things like that are up there and we are updating that all the time as we have new new input for it. That's great. Eric, I know you've had a very busy day. <laughs> you've had crowds around you all day, you've been stood there. I'm still awake. Yeah. I'm, so I'm amazed you can still stand up frankly. So Eric, I really appreciate your time and uh, have a great time with the rest of the show. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers, thank you. Cheers.